you know, there are so many writers that I know that have gotten publishing, you know, been signed to publishing companies uh, from inception. And remember what a publisher does. The publisher is, uh, you know, you sign with the publisher uh, a contract, and it's for a certain amount of time. It could be a single song deal. It could be an exclusive deal where they have everything that you write for a certain period of time. Uh, it could be just an administration deal where they just administer your copy your catalog. They don't uh, actually own it. But it's really you're assigning ownership or co-ownership to a publisher, and what they're supposed to do is exploit your works. They are supposed to get... Uh, maybe possibly get you a record deal, uh, which through a development deal possibly. You know, they want to get your songs cut by other artists. Uh, they want to get your songs into film and television uh, uses. Uh, if advertising commercials, if uh, a lot of them have uh, uh, departments that are film and TV departments, or they, um, you know, the advertising commercial departments, you know, the people going out there with the catalog trying to convince the advertisers or film and TV companies, uh, producers, music supervisors, whomever, to use your stuff in the movie and to show them how that your composition fits into their mix. You know, but you know, a lot of these, a lot of you know, in the advertising world, it's obviously uh, most of it is prior hit songs or standards that are using being they're being used in commercials. But still, somebody you've got, let's say you you wrote the Love Boat theme, and uh, there's and if a cruise line, let's say Carnival, uh, may not may have forgotten that the Love Boat theme is out there and they're looking for a commercial, if you as a publisher have gone to them or to the advertising agent and said, we've got the Love Boat theme, this would be perfect for Carnival or any other cruise line, it would put them into their head and say, hey, that's a real good idea because there's a natural fit. That's what advertising commercials that you really look for natural f fits on, on the whole thing. And, uh, but publishers are supposed to be exploiting, they're supposed to be collecting your money from you from all these different areas. You know, to try to do this yourself is very difficult. When you look at all the different areas of income, you know, it's not easy, and people can, uh, the foreign area alone, you want a publisher with who has good foreign companies or good foreign representation, sub-publishers sub that are associated with them, because they're collecting your money from the local performance rights organization, from the local uh, uh, collection, uh, mechanical rights organization, uh, and, you know, outside the U.S. And if you're in foreign language countries, if you're, in, let's say you're an English-speaking uh, writer, and you have, uh, and obviously all your songs are in English, or at least most of them, you know, if they're being exploited outside the U.S. and they change the title of those commer of those songs, or they uh, put them in a French movie or a German movie with a uh, foreign language title, it's difficult sometimes to track that stuff down. So you've got to have good uh, representation throughout the world for your stuff. So it's really there are a lot of things a publisher does. I mean, Jeff, and we explain it in, the, uh, in our book uh, in great great detail. But they're exploiting your compositions in the best sense of the word. They're not exploiting you, hopefully. Uh, they're exploiting the composition. They're collecting your money and they're paying you uh, on time. So, and they're, they're paying you accurately. So that's what you really want from a publisher. And if you can't get that, I mean, a lot of writers, some bigger writers, they'll be with a publisher for years and then they'll, form, they'll either have their own company or they'll do it 100% themselves. They might get a major, or they might get a publish, other publishing company to administer their catalog, meaning they, the other company doesn't own it, but they'll exploit it and they'll collect all the money, but they'll charge a lesser fee. It could be 5%, it could be 10%, whatever the fee is. And, but the, you know, the major writer still owns all their compositions. Uh, a lot of bands will own their own publishing because they're the major source of their exploitation. They're performing it, other people aren't cutting it, so they're really exploiting it themselves. Uh, and if other people, if they become successful, you know, then they'll hire somebody to try to push it for radio, uh, for film, television, and. Uh, video game uses, uh, ringtone uses, you know, anything like that. So, and so sometimes you, you will have uh, writers, there's, uh, you know, law firms out there who also have administrators within the law firm who administer the copyrights of their clients. You also have uh, just big publishing administration firms out there who are not co-publishers, but they're really almost like business managers in a sense. They're doing everything a publisher does and they're, uh, and they're, but they're collecting the money. They're very good at collecting money because they know the intricacies of the uh, accounting and uh, business practices throughout the industry. So a lot of different ways you can do this whole thing when you're talking about music publishing.